Today we're going to be learning about what happens when we have parallel lines that are being cut by a transversal. First, let's take a look at what a transversal actually is. Okay, so a transversal is a line that cuts through two or more other lines. So over here, I've got a transversal. It's the one that's in green, and it is cutting through two lines over here. This, this is also transversal over here. It's cutting through three lines, and this transversal is cutting through two parallel lines. Okay. Now, let's take a look at the angle pairs that are formed by a transversal. Whenever you have a transversal that is cutting through a pair of lines or more lines, you end up with angle pairs being formed. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to look at what those angle pairs are. So over here, the first one we get is our corresponding angles. Corresponding angles will always be on the same side of the transversal. So if in this case, my transversal is going in this direction and my corresponding angles will either be on the right of that transversal or they will be on the left of the transversal. They're not going to be on opposite sides or different sides of that transversal. So a pair of corresponding angles will both be on the same side of that transversal and they will also be in matching positions or corresponding positions to each other. So over here, this one, if you look at it, it is on the right hand side of my transversal and it is sitting on top of the line that the transversal is cutting through. And this one is also on the right hand side of the transversal and it is also sitting on top of the line that the that the transversal is cutting through. So they are in matching positions to each other. So your corresponding angles will always be on the same side of the transversal and they will always be in matching positions. Now in this diagram, we have got four pairs of corresponding angles that are being formed by this transversal that is cutting through the two lines. I've got angle A1 and angle B1. They are corresponding to each other. I also have angle A2 and angle B2 are corresponding. I also have angle A3 and angle B3 that are corresponding, and angle A4 and angle B4 that are corresponding. So remember, corresponding angles are always on the same side as each other on that transversal, so they'll either be both of them on the right or both of them on the left if your transversal is kind of going in this sort of direction. And they will be in matching or corresponding positions to each other. So like in this case over here, they'll either both be on top of the lines or they will both be underneath the lines like A3 and B3 are both underneath the lines. So your corresponding angles are on the same side of the transversal and they are in matching or corresponding positions. The next kind of angles that we get, or the next pair of angles that can be formed, is your co-interior angles. Now, if you think about what co-interior means, co means together, and interior means inside. Okay, so this is telling us that they're going to be together in the same space, and inside means in between the two lines. So over here, they are both going to be together on the same side of the transversal, and they will be inside or in between the two lines. So if one is over here, the other one will be over there. If one is over here, the other one will be over there. So I've got angle A3 and angle B2 is a pair of co-interior angles and angle A4 and angle B1 is also a pair of co-interior angles. Again, remember co-interior, they must be on the same side of the transversal as each other and they must both be between the lines that the transversal is cutting through. Then the last type of angle that or angle pair that we get is alternate angles. Okay, now alternate angles are the only ones that are not on the same side of the transversal as each other. They are on opposite sides. So if the one is on the left hand side, the other one will be on the right hand side of the transversal. If the transversal is not going in this sort of direction, if it's going more horizontal, if the one is above the transversal, the other one will be below the transversal, and so on. Okay, so they're on opposite sides of the transversal, and they will also both be either between the two lines, or they can both be outside the two lines. If they're between the two lines, we call them interior um, alternate interior angles and if they're outside the two lines we call them alternate exterior because interior means inside and exterior means outside so if they're both between the two lines they're alternate interior angles because they're inside and if they're outside then we call them alternate 
exterior angles. The, the pairs that we have in this diagram over here is angle A3 and angle B1 are alternate interior angles because they're both inside, they're between the two lines, and they're on opposite sides of the transversal. And then angle A4 and B2 is also a pair of alternate interior angles. Again, they are between the two lines, so that's interior, and they're on opposite sides of the transversal. Then we also have angles A1 and B3. Now they're also on opposite sides of the transversal, but now they're outside the two lines. So that means that they're alternate exterior angles. And then angle A2 and angle B4 are also alternate exterior angles because again, they're on opposite sides of the transversal and they're both outside those lines. Okay, so those are our alternate angles. So we get our corresponding angles, we have our co-interior angles, and we have our alternate angles. Now let's have a look at what happens when we have a transversal that is cutting through a pair of parallel lines. Okay, so you you can have a transversal cutting through any pair or more of lines, but if it is cutting through parallel lines, some special things happen. So that's what we're going to be looking at now. So what I want you to do is I want you to get a separate piece of paper, a spare piece of paper, and I want you to take your ruler and we are going to draw a pair of parallel lines. Now, when we do this, you can do it easily just by taking your ruler and keeping it in place and drawing a line on both sides of the ruler like that. So now I have a pair of parallel lines, very easy to draw. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to keep our ruler, we're going to draw another line, a transversal that cuts through our parallel lines like that. Okay, and I'm going to mark those as parallel. And then I'm going to label everything the same as I had all the labels in the diagrams over here, just so that we have the same labeling um, as each other for when we're doing our angle measuring and so on. Okay, so over here I'm going to label this angle A or point A and this is going to be 1, 2, 3 and 4 and then this is going to be B 1, 2, 3 and 4. So I want you to do that now. I want you to draw your parallel lines with a transversal and I want you to label those angles all the same as what I've got them. Once you've done that, I then want you to go and to measure all of the angles in your diagram over here. So you're going to measure angle A1, angle A2, angle A3, angle A4, and you're going to measure angle B1, B2, B3, and B4, all using your protractor, because we are going to compare those angles and we're going to see how they compare to each other. Once you've measured them, I want you to fill in all of the angle sizes uh, in this information over here. Okay, so I'm going to give you two minutes to do all of that measuring.
Okay, so let's go and look at what happens with the angles that you have now measured. Now, obviously, you're going to have different measurements to what I have. I measured mine as well while you were busy, and I found that in my diagram, angle A1 was 107 degrees, A2 was 73, A3 was 107, A4 was 73, Angle B1 was 107, angle B2 was 73, angle B3 was 107, and angle B4 was 73 degrees. Now your angles will obviously be different sizes to mine because you have a different diagram to what I have. But you should see the same patterns coming out of it as what I've got over here. So let's go and fill in the information over here. I'm going to use obviously the angle sizes that I've got. So angle A1, let's have a look at the corresponding angles first. So angle A1 was 107 degrees, then angle B1 was also 107 degrees, and that was a pair of corresponding angles. Then another pair of corresponding angles, A2 was 73 degrees, and B2 was also 73 degrees. Then another pair was angle A3, which was 107 degrees, and angle B3 was also 107 degrees. And then angle A4 was 73 degrees, and angle B4 was also 73 degrees. Let's have a look at our alternate angles. Angle A3 was, 70, was 107 degrees, and angle B1 was also 107 degrees. Angle A4 was 73 degrees, and angle B2 was 73 degrees. Angle A1 was 107 degrees, and angle B3 was 107 degrees, and angle A2 was 73, and angle B4 was also 73. Then our co-interior angles, angle A3 was 107 degrees, and angle B2 was 73 degrees. And if I add those up, 107 plus 73 gives me 180 degrees. Then angle A4 was 73 degrees and angle B1 was 107 degrees. And again, if I add those up, I get 180 degrees. Okay, so now obviously, as I said, you will have different values to what I have. But what you should have found is that these two angles are equal to each other. These two angles are equal to each other. These two are equal and those two are equal. All of our corresponding pairs of angles should be equal to each other. Same thing with our alternate angles. The angles that are alternate to each other should be equal to each other. So A3 and B1 are equal. A4 and B2 are equal. A1 and B3 are equal. And A2 and B4 are equal. And then for your co-interior angles, they're not equal to each other. But if you add them up, you should find that you get 180 degrees for both of the pairs of co-interior angles. And this brings us to the rules that we have for when we have parallel lines that are cut by a transversal. So let's take a look at this diagram over here. So in this diagram, I've got AB, which is parallel to CD. Now, if AB is parallel to CD, in other words, if this line, EF, is cutting through two parallel lines, this only happens if the lines are parallel to each other then corresponding angles will be equal to each other. They will always be equal to each other. Okay, so let's have a look at what the corresponding angles are in this diagram. So in this diagram, angle G1 and angle H1 are corresponding. Angle G2 and angle H2 are corresponding. Angle G3 and angle H3 are corresponding. And angle G4 and angle H4 are corresponding. Remember, your corresponding angles will be on the same side of the transversal and in corresponding or matching positions to each other. And here is a little thing to help you to remember corresponding angles. It looks kind of like an F. Okay, so you've got your parallel lines and a line that's cutting through, and you've got the two angles, they are both on the same side of that transversal, and they're both in matching positions to each other. They're both, in this case, underneath these parallel lines. Okay, so that's our F for corresponding angles. Then we've got our co-interior angles. Now, the co-interior angles were not equal to each other, but they are what we call supplementary. In other words, they add up to 180 degrees. The pairs of co-interior angles that we have in this example 
are angle G3 and angle H2, and angle G4 and angle H1. And they, if I add those up, I will get 180. And if I add those up, I will get 180. Now remember, co-interior angles are on the same side of the transversal as each other. And they are both going to be between the parallel lines. And here again, we've got something to help you to remember your co-interior angles. Your co-interior angles kind of look like a U shape over here where you've got them both between the parallel lines and they're both on the same side. This is, in this case, your transversal is going this way. They're both on the same side of the transversal. In other words, they're both, in this case, above the transversal. Okay, so they're kind of like in this U shape like that. And then we've got our alternate angles. So remember, again, if AB is parallel to CD, then your alternate angles will be equal to each other. They are only equal if those lines are parallel. Our pairs of alternate angles that we have in this diagram are G3 and H1. So there's G3 and there's H1. They are a pair of alternate interior angles because they're inside. They're both between the parallel lines. G4 and H2 are also between the parallel lines. So they're also alternate interior angles. Angle G1 and H3 are alternate exterior angles because they're outside. Remember, exterior means outside. And angle G2 and H4 are alternate exterior angles as well. And remember, your alternate exterior angles will always be equal, or your alternate angles will always be equal to each other. And your alternate angles will always be on opposite sides of the transversal to each other. And they will either both be inside or they will both be outside. If they're both inside, then it's interior. If they're both outside, then it is exterior. Okay, and here is something to help you to remember your alternate angles. We've got an N kind of shape. And there are my parallel lines over there. And you can see that the alternate angles are on opposite sides of your transversal, like that. And they're both, in this case, are between the parallel lines. But remember, you can also get alternate angles which are outside. So they're the alternate exterior angles. Okay, and that gives us the word fun. We've got angles in parallel lines are fun, where the F tells us about the corresponding angles which are equal to each other. The U tells us about co-interior angles, which are add up to 180 degrees. They are what we call supplementary. And alternate angles are also equal to each other, and that's our N in the word fun. Okay, so now we're going to go and have a look at practicing using all of this to actually solve problems and work out the sizes of angles in examples. So let's take a look at our first example over here. In this example, you've been told that AB is parallel to CD. With these symbols over here, the arrows show us that they are going in the same direction. They are parallel to each other. We need to work out the size of angle A over here, the size of B over there, C over here, and D over there. So let's take a look at how we would do this example. Okay, so first of all, I've got my diagram over here. And the only angle size that I know at the moment is 120 degrees, this angle over here. I'm going to work out A first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at this and we'll see how is A related to 120 degrees. Okay, so first I'm actually going to make this big again so I can show you this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this over here. So I've got angle A, 120 degrees, this is the one that I know, is this angle over here. Okay. Then I have over here angle A, which is in this shape over here, or in that angle over there. Now, if you look at this, it kind of looks like it's making that F shape. Now, remember the F shape, so this, this angle over here and that angle over there. The F shape is our corresponding angles, and they must be equal to each other. So that tells me that A must be equal to 120 degrees. So what I can go and say now over here is I can say that A is 120 degrees, 
And the reason I can say that is because they are corresponding angles. But now remember, we had corresponding angles when we had lines that weren't parallel. And we've, we learned that the lines, when the lines are parallel, then the corresponding angles are equal. But they won't be equal if the lines aren't parallel. So I have to uh, say that the lines are parallel. Otherwise, the fact that they're corresponding doesn't actually mean anything. So they're corresponding angles with AB parallel to CD. Okay, so this is my reason. They are corresponding angles, and I have to say which lines are parallel that is helping me to know that those two angles are going to be equal to each other. Now that I know what this is, I can fill it in over here. That's 120 degrees. Okay, now I can use that if I want to. Now I'm going to work out B. Now there are two ways that I can work out B. I can either use the parallel lines to help me to work out B using this 120 over there, or I can work out B using the A that I just worked out now. Either way is fine. Remember when we are doing geometry, there are often multiple ways of getting to the same result. So if you don't use the same method that I use, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're wrong. You just need to make sure that you're using methods that are correct and then you're not skipping out steps. Okay, so B is also going to be 120 degrees because it is vertically opposite to A. But that's not the only way that I could have proved it. I could have said, looking at this over here, let's just go back to this quickly. And let's take this out. And now I'm going to take the 120 and I'm going to see how is that 120 related to B. If I outline the angle B over here, then this is what I'm going to get. Now it does look a little bit different. It's going like that, like that, like that. I've got an angle over there. I've got an angle over there. It doesn't really look like the N because it's kind of been stretched, but it is still our N shape. Okay, so this over here is our N shape. That is for alternate angles. Remember, I've got over here an angle that is on the one side of the transversal and an angle that's on the other side of the transversal. They're on opposite sides and they're both between the parallel lines. So those, those are alternate angles. Remember, alternate angles are going to be equal to each other. So another reason that I could have used for this is I could have said that they are alternate angles with... A, B, parallel to C, D. Because just like with the corresponding angles one over here, I can't say that alternate angles are equal unless those lines are parallel. If the alternate angles, or if the lines aren't parallel, the fact that they're alternate angles really doesn't mean anything. But because the lines are parallel, that means that the alternate angles will be equal to each other. So I could use either one of those two reasons. They both are absolutely correct. Okay, so now I know that this over here is 120 degrees. Okay, the next one I'm going to work out is C. Now, once again, there's more than one way of doing this. I'm going to say C is supplementary. This angle is supplementary with B or with A or with that angle over there because over here I have got a U shape, which is our co-interior angles. Both of these angles are between the parallel lines and they're on the same side of the transversal as each other, giving me this U shape, meaning that they are supplementary to each other. So whether I do it with a straight line here or the straight line here or with the co-interior angles, I will end up with the same thing because they're supplementary with 100. The C is supplementary with 120 no matter what I do. Okay, so I can say C plus 120 equals 180 degrees because supplementary angles add up to 180. So I'm going to take this and solve for C, but first I need to give a reason. And there, there are two reasons I could use here. I could say that it's angles on a straight line. Or I could say that these are co-interior angles. Okay, so let's just have a look at this quickly over here. So in this case, I'm not, I'm not working with angle B, I'm working with angle C. So I've got this angle and that angle, and they make this U shape, which is on its side, but it's still that U shape. They are on the same side of the transversal, and they're both between the parallel lines. So they are going to be supplementary to each other because they are co-interior. Okay, so over here, I can say, 
co-interior angles. Again, I have to say that the lines are parallel. A, B, parallel to C, D, because if those lines aren't parallel, then it doesn't mean anything. The fact that the co-interior means absolutely nothing if the lines aren't parallel. So I have to say that those lines are parallel in order to be able to say that the co-interior angles add up to 180 degrees. Okay, so now I'm going to go and solve for C. Take the 120 across, I have C equals 180 minus 120 degrees, so therefore C is 60 degrees. Okay, so that's what we get over here for C. Okay, now once we've done that, we're going to work out D over here. Now again, there is more than one way of doing this. The easiest way is to use vertically opposite angles, but I'm going to show you other ways as well. So first, for D, it's going to be equal to 120 degrees because it is vertically opposite to the 120 that they gave me right from the start. So it's equal to 120 degrees and my reason vertically opposite angles. But again, remember, it's not the only way that we could use, that we could work this out. I could have said that D is corresponding to B because if you look over here, they're both on the same side of that transversal as each other and they're both in matching positions to each other. They are both on top of my parallel lines. So they are matching each other. So they are corresponding angles with AB parallel to CD. Another reason I could have used is I could have used A to work out D. If I didn't know any of these angles and I knew A, I could have used A to work out D by saying that they are on opposite sides of my transversal, which means that they are alternate, but they are outside the parallel lines, which means that they are alternate exterior angles. So I would say alternate exterior angles with AB parallel to CD. So that is another way that I could have done it. Over here for B, I can say alternate interior angles, but if I just say alternate angles without saying interior, then it's implied that it is interior. So I could have filled in over here interior angles as well, but it's not entirely necessary. But when you're doing alternate exterior angles, then you, de then you do need to specify that. Okay, so that is how we use parallel lines to work out the sizes of angles. Now I'm going to give you some that you're going to do for yourself. Okay, so the first one you're going to do is this one over here. Here we've got AB parallel to CD. You've been told that this angle over here is 53 degrees and you need to work out the size of X. And I'm going to give you one minute to solve this. Okay, so let's see what you got for that. So in this example over here, I have got AB parallel to CD. I need to work out X where I've been told this angle over here. So let's see how those two angles are related to each other. Okay, so first I'm going to do this. I'm going to see, so this is angle X over here. And this is the angle that I've been given, the 53 degrees. Now if you look at that, if I turn it around like that, it kind of looks like the in shape. This is our alternate angles. If you think about it, they are both on opposite sides of the transversal. This is our transversal. They are on opposite sides of the transversal and they're both between the lines. So they're alternate interior angles. So angle or so X is going to be equal to 53 degrees because alternate angles are equal to each other. So X equals 53 degrees and these are alternate 
interior angles. And remember, they will only be equal to each other if the lines are parallel. So I have to say AB parallel to CD. So that's what you should have got for question A. Now you're going to go and do question B. Okay, so here you've got PQ parallel to RS. Here's your transversal TU. You have to work out X where they've given you this angle over here, which is 136 degrees. Okay, so I'm going to give you again one minute to solve this problem. Okay, so let's see what you got for that one. So in this one, we have got over here, PQ, which is parallel to RS, okay? And then TU is our transversal. We need to work out X, so that's this angle over here. And we've been told that this angle is 136 degrees. Now, Hopefully you will have noticed that these kind of form a U shape. It's kind of like squished over on the side, but it's still kind of a U shape. Okay, so that is our co-interior angles. They are together. They are both inside between the parallel lines and they are on the same side of the transversal. They're both, in this case, on top of the transversal. Okay, so they are co-interior. And remember, co-interior angles are supplementary. That means that they add up to 180 degrees. So for question B, I can say that X plus 136 degrees must add up to 180. And my reason is co-interior angles and in this case, it's with PQ parallel to RS. Remember, you have to say that. Otherwise, the fact that the co-interior doesn't mean anything. Okay, so I'm going to take this 136, get rid of it. So I have X equals 180 degrees minus 136 degrees. And that gives me X equal to 44 degrees. So you should have got for that one that X is 44 degrees. Okay, next one. Okay, now this time you need to work out X again, and I'm going to give you one minute to solve this problem. Okay, so let's see how you did with that example. So in this one over here, we had JK, which was parallel to LM. We have been told that this angle is 47 degrees, and we need to work out the size of X, which is over here. So if we take our pen and we just outline these angles, so I need to work out X, which is this angle over here, 
and I've been told that this angle is 47 degrees. Now, if we take this and we kind of turn it around like that, you kind of have a bit of an F shape over here. This is our corresponding angle shape. If you look, they are both on the same side of the transversal as each other, and they're both in matching positions to each other. So they are corresponding angles. So x is equal to 47 degrees because corresponding angles are equal to each other when the lines are parallel. So x equals 47 degrees, and I can say that they are corresponding angles with jk parallel to lm. Okay, next example. Right, in this case, you have been given these two angles, both in terms of x, and you need to work out what the size of x is. Okay, so I'm going to give you again a minute to solve this problem. Okay, so let's see how you did with that example. So over here, we have got this angle, which is x plus 50. This angle is 2x minus 10. We've been told that these two lines are parallel to each other. This is our transversal over here. Now, if you look at where these angles are, they are both on the same side of that transversal, and they are both in matching positions to each other. They're both sitting on top of the parallel lines. So these are corresponding angles. If we drew or outlined our angles like this over here, you'll see that we end up with an F shape. Like that. Okay, so again, I can turn that around. You can see that's kind of like an F shape over there. Okay, so that's our corresponding angles. And we know the corresponding angles are equal to each other, which means that I can say that X plus 50 degrees is equal to 2X minus 10 degrees. And my reason is because those are corresponding angles with AB parallel to CD. Okay, so now that I know that, I can go and solve for X. So I need to take my X's and get them all on my left-hand side. So that gives me X minus 2X equals my angles on the other side. So negative 10 degrees minus 50 degrees. So that's negative X equals negative 60 degrees. Therefore, X is going to be equal to 60 degrees. So that's what you should have got for X in that example. Right, next example, question E. Now we've got... Again, two angles we've been given that are both in terms of x, and again, you need to work out the size of x. So I'm going to give you one minute to solve for x in this example again.
Okay, so let's see what you got for x in this example. So first of all, if you look over here, if you look at where the angles are that you've been told that in terms of x, this one is on the left-hand side of the transversal, this one is on the right-hand side, and they're both between the parallel lines. That means that we are working with alternate interior angles in this example. Okay, if you look over here, if I do this, and that, and that, I get kind of a skew sort of N shape, like that, okay? So that is our shape for our, our alternate angles. So over here, alternate angles we know, they are equal to each other. So X plus 10 degrees is equal to 3X minus 40 degrees. And the reason that I can say that is because they are alternate interior angles with AB parallel to CD. Okay, once I've got that, I then need to go and solve for X. So now let's take our X's on the left, three, oh, X minus 3X equals, and on the right, I'm going to have minus 40 degrees minus 10 degrees. That gives me negative 2X equal to negative 50 degrees so therefore x is equal to 25 degrees so that's what you should have got for x in that example right now for the next one now in this example there is a little bit more going on okay now you need to work out three different angles you need to work out the size of x the size of y and the size of z and you need to be careful over here about how you're going to go about working out these angles i'm going to give you two minutes to solve this problem. Okay, so let's see how that example went. So in this example, you have been told that AB is parallel to EF. You have to be careful because CD is not parallel to AB or EF. CD is going in a different direction. Okay, we have been told this angle over here is 100 degrees. We need to work out the size of X, Y, and Z. Okay, so now to work, first of all, we have to work out the size of X. Now, you might have thought that X is corresponding to 85 over here, which it is. They are corresponding, but you can't use that because these two lines are not parallel, which means that, remember, corresponding angles mean absolutely nothing if the lines aren't parallel. So I can't use the 85 degrees to work out X. I have to use the 100 degrees to work out X. So let's have a look at how the 100 degrees and the X are related to each other. They are on opposite sides of this line, which means that I'm going to be working with alternate angles. And they are both outside. Here's a parallel line. There's a parallel line. 
they are both outside the parallel line. So these are exterior. So I've got alternate, because they're opposite sides, exterior angles. Remember that alternate angles will be equal to each other. So these are going to be equal. So I can say x is equal to 100 degrees. And my reason is because they are alternate, because they're on opposite sides of that transversal, alternate exterior because they're both outside. Okay, so alternate exterior angles. With AB parallel to EF, not CD. Okay, so that is how I know that these two angles are equal to each other. Please be careful, X is not 85 degrees because CD is not parallel to EF. So this is 100 degrees over there. Once you've worked out that, you can then work out Y. So now I can say Y is equal to also 100 degrees and my reason over here is going to be because they are vertically opposite to each other. But that's not the only way that I can work it out. Okay, there's another way that I can work it out. I can also say that this angle is corresponding to that angle over there because they are on the same side of the transversal and they're in matching positions to each other. They're both sitting on top of the parallel lines. So they are corresponding. So I could also have said or that they are corresponding angles with AB parallel to E. F. So that is another way that I could have proved that Y is 100 degrees. I can either use the fact that they're virtually opposite, that the Y is virtually opposite to the X, or I can say that it is corresponding to this 100 degrees over here because they're on the same side of this transversal and they're both sitting on top of the parallel lines and the lines are parallel to each other. Okay. Next, I need to work out Z. Now, if you look in the diagram over here, Z is sitting over here at this point on the line that is not parallel to AB or EF. So I can't use parallel lines to work this one out. The only thing I can do to work this one out is to use the 85. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that those are equal to each other because they are vertically opposite. So Z is 85 degrees and they are vertically opposite angles. So that's what you should have got for question F that X was 100 because of alternate exterior angles. Y is also 100 because of vertically opposite or corresponding angles. And Z is 85 degrees because of vertically opposite angles. Okay, now you're going to go on to question G. Now in this one, you need to work out the size of X and you need to work out the size of Y. I'm going to give you two minutes to do this.
Okay, so let's see what you got for x and y in this example. So first of all, in this example, I have got a pair of parallel lines, and here I've actually got two transversals. Okay, now you need to be careful. When you have parallel lines with more than one transversal, you can only use angles that are on the same transversal to work out other angles. Okay, so you can't, I can't use the 86 to work out the x because it's a different transversal. The x is on EF and 86 is on GH. They're different transversals. So I can only work on one transversal uh, on pairs of angles that are on the same transversal. Okay, so if I want to work out x, I have to use an angle that is on that same transversal. So I have to use the 75 degrees over here. So I'm looking over here to, when I'm working out x, which is this angle, I'm going to be using the 75 degrees. So let's see how they fit together. So if you look at the shape that's formed over here, this is kind of like an F, it's backwards. Okay, but it's kind of like an F. And those are then corresponding angles. If you look at them, they are both on the same side of that transversal. And they're both in matching positions to each other. Okay, so these are corresponding. We know the corresponding angles are equal to each other when the lines are parallel, which A, B, and C, D are parallel. So I can say that X is equal to 75 degrees, and my reason is going to be because these two angles are corresponding to each other. So corresponding angles with AB parallel to CD. Okay, so now I know that this angle over here is 75 degrees. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to work out Y. Now again, Y is on GH. I can't use anything that's on EF to help me to work out Y because it's not on the same transversal, okay? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to use the 86 degrees. So let's see how the 86 degrees is related to the Y. So if I have the Y is over here, the 86 degrees is this angle over here, they kind of make that U shape. They are co-interior. They're both together on the same side of the transversal and they are both together between the parallel lines. So they are co-interior angles. And we know the co-interior angles are supplementary. That means that they add up to 180 degrees. So I can say that Y plus 86 degrees equals 180 degrees. And my reason is co-interior angles with AB parallel to CD. And then I have to solve for x. So y is equal to 180 degrees minus 86 degrees. And that gives me y equals 94 degrees. So you should have got for this example that x was 75 because of corresponding angles. And y is 94 degrees because of co-interior angles. Okay. And then the last example for today is this one over here. Now we have got two pairs of parallel lines in this example. You've been told that AF is parallel to DC, and you've also been told that AD is parallel to EC over here. Okay, so now you need to be careful with this one because in this case, your parallel lines can also be transversals of other parallel lines. So over here, AD is a transversal of, e, of AC and DC. And EC is also a transversal of AF and DC. But AF is a transversal of AD and EC. And DC is also a transversal of AD and EC. So here we actually have all of our lines are parallel to other lines in the diagram. But they are also acting as transversals for other pairs of parallel lines. Okay, so what you need to do is you need to work out the size of x. You're going to have to do a multi-step calculation for that. You have to work out something else before you can work out x. And then you also are going to work out the size of y in this example. Okay, so I'm going to give you two minutes to do this example.
Okay, so let's see how this example went. So in this example, I need to work out X first, okay? Now I have a couple of options. I can work out D, and then I can use D to work out X over here. Or I can work out this angle over here, angle A, B, C, and use that to work out X. Or I can use, I can work out angle A, B, E, and use that to work out X, okay? It doesn't really matter which way I do it. Any of those is going to give me the same result in the end. I will always end up with the same value of X. What I am going to choose not to do is I'm not going to work out D first, because if I work out D first, that's not going to help me when I need to work out Y. When I work out Y, I'm going to need an angle somewhere here to help me to work out Y. So I'm rather going to work out an angle over here and use that to work out X. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say over here, that this angle is what I know and I'm going to use it to work out this angle over here, angle A, B, E. So I'm going to work out those angles or that angle over there. So I'm going to say angle A, B, E is equal to and now if you look at this, it's kind of forming that N shape, okay? Both of these angles are between this set of parallel lines. And they are on opposite sides of the transversal. Now in this case, the transversal might be a little bit difficult for you to see, but AB or AF is the transversal in this case, even though it is also a parallel line. It's not parallel to the lines that we're working with over here, the parallel lines here are AD and EC. This line is acting as a transversal for those lines. And these angles over here are alternate to each other. So that means that they are equal. So I can say that this angle is going to be 50 degrees. And my reason for that is that they are alternate interior angles. with AD parallel to CE. Okay, so now I know that this angle over here is 50 degrees. Okay, now because I know that, I can use that to help me to work out X. Because now if I look at this line, which is parallel to that line, and I use this as my transversal, so now I'm using these ang this angle over here, and this angle over here. These two angles are corresponding. They're both on the same side of that transversal. They're both on the left-hand side. And they're in matching positions to each other. They're both sitting on top of these parallel lines. So they are corresponding to each other. So now I can say that X is equal to 50 degrees. And my reason is that they are corresponding angles. With... In this case, I'm using AF, which is parallel to DC. Please take note, over here, I had a different set of parallel lines to what I had over there. Okay, because I was working in, when I was working out this angle, I was using the fact that those were parallel. With this was my transversal. But here, to work out X, I'm using the fact that these are parallel with that as my transversal. So you have to say which pair of parallel lines you're talking about. Okay. So now I know that this is 50 degrees. Now I need to work out the size of Y. Now to work out Y, it is on a straight line with this 50 that I just worked out over there. So I can use a straight line to work out Y, knowing that angles on a straight line are supplementary. They add up to 180 degrees. So Y plus 50 degrees equals 180 degrees because there are angles on a straight line. Okay, so now I'm just going to solve for Y. So I have Y equals 180 degrees minus 50 degrees, and that gives me Y equals 130 degrees. So now I know that Y is 130 degrees. Now, remember I said this is not the only way of doing it. You could have worked out this angle using co-interior angles instead, and then worked out this angle using co-interior angles as well. 
and you still would have got 50. If you used co-interior angles, you would have found this was 130, and then this would have been 50 because of co-interior angles as well. Or, and then if you did that, then you would have had this angle and you would have used vertically opposite to work out Y. Or you could have worked out D to work out X. Again, using co-interior angles and then co-interior angles again. Okay, so there are multiple ways that you could do it. Another option for this is to use the fact that this is a parallelogram. So another way to do it would have been to say, instead of doing all of this, I could have rather said to work out X over here. I could have said that A, B, C, D is a parallelogram. How do I know that? I know that because I have two pairs of opposite sides that are parallel to each other. Okay, and because I know that, I can then say, therefore, x is equal to 50 degrees because the opposite sides or opposite angles of a parallelogram A, B, C, D are equal. Okay, so that's another way of working out X, but that wouldn't really have helped you to work out Y. You would still then have had to work out an angle here to help you to work out Y. So that is an option, maybe not the best option in this case. The better option would be to work out one of the angles here and then use it to work out X and use it to work out Y. Okay, so there are a number of ways of doing it. Like I said, when you're working in, ge in geometry, there's often more than one way of working out a problem, of solving a problem. The route that you take isn't necessarily going to be the same as the route that somebody else takes. But so long as you're not skipping out steps, so I can't do this part in my head and then say that this is 50 degrees because it's corresponding and then expect the examiner to know that I knew that that was 50 degrees and when I didn't write it down. I have to write down every single step over here in order to be able to use that information to work out the next thing. Okay, so every step that you do, you have to write down. You can't just fill things in on the diagram and use whatever you filled in on the diagram. You have to actually write it down here with all of the reasons. And so long as you do that, then even if you follow a different route to what somebody else does, you could you should still end up in the same place. And that is how we work with parallel lines that are being cut by a transversal. Now that we've learned the concepts in this lesson, it's important to practice, practice, practice. If you haven't already got the worksheet that goes with this video, you can find it by clicking on the link in the description below. The worksheet comes with an extra exercise full of questions for you to work on to master the concepts covered in this lesson. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button so that others can benefit from it too. Also be sure to subscribe so that you can easily find my other lessons and hit the bell so that you will get notified about lessons as I upload them.